Good morning, Delaware. It's going to be a great Memorial Day weekend. I'm glad you joined us this morning. It's uh, wonderful to have you. It's great to be back in the studio live. Uh, we have so much to talk about today. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, George. How you doing? I'm I'm good. I, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Talkative this morning, aren't you? Yep, yep. Lots of things to say. All the words are coming to my brain. That's good. Uh-huh. Uh, drink that coffee faster. We're going to work help. on it. Yes. Uh, our guest today is Beth McCollum from Preservation Parks, who's going to talk about the summer letterbox program as soon as we get our microphone in place. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning, Beth. Great to have you here. Thank you for being here. Um, we had a great Sarah Val program Friday. We really last did. Friday. It was so much fun. I can't believe it was only a week ago. I know. I feel like it happened. There was so much build up to it. And then I was like, ah, I can breathe. And mm-hmm. it feels like it was a million years ago now. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like when you take a vacation, then the, then the day you come back to work, it's like it never happened. Right. So, uh, But we are, we are looking forward to a great kickoff to summer reading program, the summer letterbox program. I mean, there's so much coming up this week. And not to mention the Memorial Day Parade yes. in Powell. In Powell. So anyway, we'll talk more about that in the second half of the show. So Nicole, what are you reading, listening to, binging on, etc.? Well, I want to talk a little bit about a series that is premiering this week, and it's unfortunately behind a paywall. It's um, on Apple TV. So if you are an Apple TV subscriber, um, you will have access to it. And if you don't, you can probably even honestly get like a seven day free trial and just watch this series if you really wanted to. (laughs) Um, But it's called Prehistoric Planet. And the reason why I'm into it is because it's created by the same people who created all of those other beautiful like planet Earth, our planet, those sorts of documentaries. Um, It's BBC, the the studios who's created it is, oh, I just lost it, is, um, oh, yep, there it is. Yeah, it's by it's by BBC Studios Natural History Unit. They're the ones who have done all of that. It's narrated by Sir David Attenborough. Oh, so, well, there you go. So, of course, you know, he's one of my favorite human to narrate anything in the entire world. Um, what they have done in this series is they have taken... Um, what we have gathered from fossils, from bones, from um, where things have been found, and what we know about dinosaurs. And they have then paired that with gorgeous CGI, I mean lifelike CGI, um, and put it together in this series to really reimagine uh, what dinosaurs, you know, would have done in their day to day. And it's not, it's not your, I think it's striking. The way that they open the series is not with, you know, the T Rex standing on top of a mountain and like doing its screech, you know, with like birds hanging out of its mouth or anything like that. <laughs> in fact, the way that they start it is with it swimming across an ocean or across, you know, a, a, a body of water with, you know, little baby T Rexes behind it uh, <laughs> to get to an island where it. It, you know, smelled a rotting something and decided to eat and to teach its young how to also eat. And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm just going, how? <laughs> how do they know? <laughs> like, I'm almost like mad <laughs> because how can they how can they presume this? So, of course, then. You go to the website, you go to Apple TV's website for Prehistoric Planet and you see that, you know, they have learned that T-Rex bones were actually hollow, so they would have been very able to swim. Um, also, they know that T-Rexes are very bird-like, and their closest living, one of their closest living relatives right now is like an emu mm-hmm. um, or an ostrich, and those birds can swim very well. And so they were like, yeah, they probably could have swam, and they probably would have swam, and they had a keen sense of smell. So if they needed to cross a body of water, it's very likely that they would have crossed a body of water. So it's just all these sorts of things. There's another um, there's another um, animal that we're introduced to, and it, you know, is kind of like, well, the adults live here on this island, but they lay their eggs over here on this island, and when the eggs are hatched, they climb up to the top, and they are born, and then they fly over to this forest, and then they live for the first years, five years of their life in this forest. Forest, and then they go back and join the adults on the island. And again, I'm screaming at the TV, how? <laughs> Why do you know this? <laughs> and of course, it's because fossils, you know, right. they can they can look at fossils, they can look at bones, they can say all of these, you know, are the same creatures. Why are they in these different areas? Let's put it together and let's make a story out of it. And it's fascinating. So here's what I'm going to tie into the library. 
what I'm going to tie into the library then is if you go to our website and you go to DelawareLibrary.org and you search our catalog, um, one of the ways that you can search our catalog is by list. And lots of other librarians have made really cool lists. You can search for any list that you want to for anything that you're interested in. But search the catalog by list for dinosaurs for grownups. And then if you search for <laughs> dinosaurs for grownups, you will find many lists, actually, that talk about, you know, oh, do you want to read a fiction book that's about dinosaurs that's not made for a five-year-old? Those exist. <laughs> do you want to read about some of the new things that we found out that, like, velociraptors had feathers, you know, and look like birds? You know, do you want to read that kind of stuff? Then you can find that out. So there's lots of ones. One of the books that I found is called Weird Dinosaurs, The Strange New Fossils, Challenging Everything We Thought We Knew. It's a book that was published in 2017, so it's got a lot more modern findings and things like that. Um, the Rise and the Fall of the Dinosaurs, A New History of a Lost World uh, by Stephen Broussat, uh, published in 2018, Why Dinosaurs Matter. So I would definitely recommend you to, um, if you don't have access to this program or if you do have access to this program, go to our website and search by list Dinosaurs for Grownups and you might be as fascinated as I am and stop screaming at the TV. How? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Beth, I see you've got a book in front of you. So what are you reading? I do. Well, I haven't started this one yet. That's this is allowed. the seventh book in the series. Okay. It's the Maggie Hope Mystery Series. And Maggie Hope is an American uh, young woman who travels to England because she inherits her grandmother's estate. Okay. And while she's there, um, it's taking a little longer. So she needs to get a job. Mm -hmm. And she ends up getting a job as Mr. Churchill's secretary. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, why Easy not, enough, right? right? <laughs> and I, I assume we're talking about Winston Churchill and not Winston like Churchill. Harry Churchill, who runs the bookie shop, yes. right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thomas uh, Church, just random yeah. Churchill's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Mr. Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, it takes place during World War II, and Maggie Hope is a math mathematician. And she had hoped to go to graduate school, but um, it, she puts those plans on hold. So she, using her skills, she is able to crack this code uh -huh. in the newspaper, and she warts off a horrible attack on um, church on Mr. Churchill. So this sets off the series. And she becomes a spy for MI5, mm. and her adventures take her to into Germany. Um, this one that I'm about to start is the Paris Spy. So she's, Paris, go, she's going yes. to Paris. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> the one um, Mrs. Roosevelt's confidant. She comes to Washington D.C. And she helps um, Eleanor Roosevelt solve help solve a mystery for one of her <laughs> staff members. So it's really fun, yeah. light, but historical fiction based on some real characters mm -hmm. in history. It's They're, mystery historical it, fiction. Yes. That's yeah. a fun, yes. fun genre blend. Yes. Yeah. Really so is, this yeah. is the seventh book of the series that I'm about to start. Great. I'm really excited. And who's the author? The author is Susan Ella McNeil. Okay, great. And uh, I won't even mention that that book's from the Westerville Public Library. Well, maybe she got it, you know, <laughs> through the seals. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I do live in Westerville. But you're, but we I, all love each other. It's I, no big deal. Yes, I just thought it, it yes, was Yes, and funny. I do love the Delaware Library. <laughs> well, and we love preservation parks, but we'll spend that the second half of the show talking about how, the ways that love is shown. Exactly. So, uh, so a, a couple of months ago, I talked about March. Uh, the, which was the trilogy that was the um, kind of the graphic memoir of John Lewis's time in the mm -hmm. early part of the civil rights movement, um, and w that was that covered things like the the freedom rides, the lunch counter sit-ins, and the struggle to get the Voting Rights Act passed after John F. Kennedy was assassinated. So uh, there was a, a request for a follow-up to that, and so in 2021, I believe it was. Um, I got that day right. Yeah. In 2021, uh, posthumously, the book Run was published. Mm -hmm. And this was supposed to be the first of a trilogy talking about Lewis's life after the Voting Rights Act was passed. Now, the, the original one was framed around Lewis in his office 
when Barack Obama was about to be inaugurated for his uh, first term as president. And he's explaining to a child about what it was like, how far we had come from the 1950s to 2009. And so this one covers his period as the um, executive secretary, I believe that was his title, of uh, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committees, and that was during the mid-1960s. So even though Brown, Board, uh, Brown versus Board of Education supposedly desegregated public schools, uh, the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act had been passed and signed into law, but the fight for equality was hardly over. Um, people of color were trying to register to vote in southern states. They were still being turned away. Uh, at, <laughs> in the best of times, they were being turned away. At the mm-hmm. worst of times, they were being murdered or uh, physically beaten and things like that. In northern states, segregation was more uh, de facto rather than de jure. In other words, it just happened uh, because that's how we did things rather than by being written into law. Mm-hmm. But it was just as real. Uh, so the struggle for as the struggle for African American rights got bigger and hotter, the movement started to break up. It started a schism. I mean, the Congress of Racial Equality, the NAACP, the Urban League, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, uh, and the, uh, the the newly born Black Panther Party, they all vied with Lewis's uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee for leadership and relevance in the fight. Um, and then. The war in Vietnam came along, and that really created new new problems within the movement because some of the organizations took no stand on the war, and others were vehemently opposing it as a waste of the lives of, of young people, especially young black and white men, poor white men's lives, the ones who couldn't afford to go to college or couldn't afford to get a deferment somehow. Uh, Lewis eventually lost a power struggle with Stokely Carmichael for the leadership of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating I don't know why. I'm, I'm going to just say SNCC. Oh, um, I like it. Yeah, SNCC is what they call it. I should just go with that. Uh, that power struggle concludes the book. And although the title is Run Book One, I doubt we're going to see book two because mm. Lewis died right after the text for this was completed, but before even the illustrations were done. And so without him to be around to work on it, I don't think we're going to get a book that's going to cover his years um, working on voting rights issues, running the VISTA program under President Carter, his time on Atlanta City Council, or his 37 years as a member of the House of Representatives. You don't think there's a family member who could help lead the charge? They could do that, but it wouldn't be the same as having it in Lewis's voice because he worked really closely with the the, 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 – Artists, uh, Andrew Aiden, El Fury, and uh, Nate Powell, mm-hmm. to get this book to be his voice. And so I don't think it would have the same kind of relevance, the same kind of feeling as uh, March or Run, Run One here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's less drama in this book than there was in the three volumes of March because basically what you're looking at is a corporate power struggle. And that can be fun when it's Mad Men. Uh, you know, but this it just it, it there's it doesn't have the same kind of drama, but it does have incredible historical relevance because we, we see how the 60s started out so optimistic and then the war in Vietnam and then the split in the civil rights movement it turned into 1968 and how awful that was. And so this really leads into that and takes you right to the precipice and then it kind of stops. Mm-hmm. So, it, but it's, it's, um, it, it's interesting. It's a, a, a well-told story. The illustrations are every bit as good in this one as they were in the first three volumes. Um, but it's just not as it, – it, it's not – there's not as much um, immediate drama. Mm-hmm. It's much more like who can get a majority vote in this meeting. That's, <laughs> it's its own kind of drama. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I strongly recommend this for anyone who wants to know more about the civil rights struggles of the 60s or who are interested in that period because there are some really interesting insights into the, the personalities of people like Julian Bond, Andrew Young, Stokely Carmichael – People like that. So it's a, a, a very interesting book. And again, from John Lewis's point of view, but what an incredible point of view that was. And his voice is missed. So we're going to take a break here. When we come back, we're going to talk about the summer letterbox program with the preservation parks. We'll probably touch on some of the things that are coming up with the summer reading program this week and the Powell Memorial Day Parade. So stay tuned. Well, as speaking of those friends of the Delaware County District Library, a week from tomorrow, this is not tomorrow, but it's actually on Saturday, June 4th, they are having a media sale. Now, this is going to be CDs and DVDs only, no books at this one, but it's going to be at the Powell Library. We, there's not a lot of room at the Powell Library, so we're, we're kind of doing a limited sort of sale here, but they will be selling there from 9 to 3 on Saturday, June 4th. So that's our commercial for the uh, the friends coming up. That's uh, going to be a big sale, and uh, we got a lot of DVDs and CDs, so. So Do they put audiobooks the in this one too? Yes, there'll be audiobooks as well. There'll be some playaways, there'll yeah. be some uh, books on CD. 
Uh, so yeah, there'll be a lot of variety. I have one DVD that I'm on the hunt for because it's hard to find on streaming services. It goes off and on, and it is the funniest kids movie I have ever seen. It's called Storks, and it's got Andy Samberg and uh, a whole bunch of other people, Kelsey Grammer, a whole bunch of other people in it. Literally the funniest kids movie I've ever seen. I, I belly laugh at it all the time, <laughs> and I, I want to own it. And so if anybody goes sales and five storks let me know all right we'll, we'll, we'll let <laughs> you know keep an eye out. yeah uh-huh. <laughs> so again you watch I, it first yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the only kind of storks we want to see right now. Uh, <laughs> Beth McCollum, we're glad to have you here from Preservation Parks. So talk a little bit about the Summer Letterbox Program. First, what is it, and then how do people participate? Sure, absolutely. Summer Letterbox Program is part geocache, part scavenger hunt. Okay. But instead of using uh, coordinates like you would for a geocache, you use clues. Okay. So we publish a booklet. And it has eight of our parks at Preservation Parks. And new this year, we have four parks within the city of Delaware. Um, So it's Bennett Park, uh, Blue Limestone Park, Mingo Park, and uh, Boardman Arts Park. That's so exciting. It's all walkable, you know, within the city. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to be able to include that. Um, And our newest park, Hickory Woods Park. Mm -hmm. And people can pick up a booklet at any Delaware District Library. Uh-huh. We are so thankful. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really easy. You go to the desk, you write your name down, an email, so we can contact you mm-hmm. if you know we have to change a clue or something. Mm-hmm. And the librarian will hand you a nice, colorful booklet. It's beautiful. That, that goes along with the Oceans of Possibility theme for the mm-hmm. summer. <laughs> And each child or adult who's ever participating uh, could have their own booklet. And then you just follow along with the clues in the booklet. Um, You get any combination of four parks, so whether they're the parks within the city of Delaware or any of the preservation parks, um, you could win a prize. Those prizes will be available, I believe, June 16th Mm -hmm. through Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Um, And those will be available for pickup at the library or at Deerhaven Park. Um, You could also register for this online at preservationparks.com or at Deerhaven Park. Great. That yeah. sounds it's a, yeah. it's a great way to get people out walking around discovering yeah. preservation parks are such a treasure in this county. Mm-hmm. This is a great way to get introduced to them especially if if you're one of the people who's new to the county mm-hmm. or perhaps you haven't uh, explored outside of the city or Powell or Delaware or mm-hmm. Sunbury and you want to see some more of the county. This is a great way to do it. It we, really is. Yeah, we meet friends a lot of times from who live in uh, either Union or Franklin County and they'll be like, "Hey, do you want to meet up this summer?" and we'll be like, "Yes, we're going to one of the preservation parks and you're going to letterbox yeah. with us." Yeah. <laughs> and it's a great way for anyone who maybe just goes to a park to walk Mm -hmm. it's a new way to Mm -hmm. explore a park and learn something about Mm -hmm. it and this year you can learn a little bit about oceanography as well one of the great things about the preservation parks i think is each one of them has their own character Mm -hmm. you know there's like um deer haven's really different than the the farm I mean, and that's mm-hmm. and that's what keeps it interesting too. You know, it's not like you've seen one park, you've seen them all. <laughs> so yeah, you've seen one park, you've seen one park. How, how so. do you how do you incorporate oceanography into? Because it's not like we are you know surrounded by oceans here in Ohio yeah. and, and that our parks are. So how is that incorporated into the letterbox this year? Well, one of the ways is that we talk about our contribution to the water cycle, mm-hmm. and so the creeks that mm-hmm. run through the parks are connected mm-hmm. to the rivers. Like the Old Tangier River, the Scioto River, uh-huh. um, and those are connected to the Ohio River, and the Ohio River is connected to the Mississippi, and that goes out to the Gulf of Mexico. We're all connected. We're they all, are all connected. <laughs> yes. You're going to break into circle of life here yep. or something? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, I love that tie-in uh, with, the, with the, uh, the theme of the Summer Reading Club and everything. Uh, but it, it stands on its own too because there you have some uh, you also have something else going on with the the, uh, the birds part of the project too. So why yes. don't you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So this summer we also have our two themed exhibits. Um, it's about weather mm-hmm. and it is called a climate connection, mm-hmm. and that opens Sunday. Uh, let's see, Sunday, May 29th. That's at Shale Hollow Lodge, and it is all weather connected Mm -hmm. so you learn about um, thunderstorms and tornadoes and rain and pressure and how that is connected to the climate Mm -hmm. and you know weather affects what we do every day 
uh, what we wear, mm-hmm. um, our activities. Um, How fast they can build the new library at Home Insights Road. <laughs> Absolutely. It really yeah. touches everything What you need we to do. wear to a park. Do you need to wear your boots to a park. Right, yeah. Do you need your wellies or can you get by with flip-flops? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. and so I think that's a really nice exhibit for um, everyone. Mm-hmm. And we also have another exhibit, which is um, For the Love of Birds. And that's by artists Julie Turrentine and Caroline Blizzard. That is at Deer Haven Park. Um, we have a Meet the Artist event um, on tonight, actually, um, but it opens to the public on Saturday, um, May 28th at 10 o'clock at Deer Haven, and we have activities for the whole family, and that exhibit is a combination of melted glass, birds, and nature photography. Nice. That's going to be gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. I, I just can't wait. I think it, it'll be a great, great, great Great for everyone. And so, that's such a great location, too, because of the aviary. There right. Yeah. That's what I was going to yeah. double check on. This is the location that has the aviary. It has the aviary. It's our bird yeah. sanctuary. Can you talk about what birds are there now? Uh, we still have owls there. Okay. Yeah. Owls so. are so cool. That's they amazing. Really I was on your website and I was looking at just some of the different like features of each of the parks. And one of the things that I, I did not know is that your aviary, the birds that are in the aviary are permanently injured. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like why, what, what's happening with them? Why can't, why can't they go back out? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we partner with Ohio Nature Education uh, in Lincoln County, and they provide us the birds. And they live at with Ohio Nature Education, and they, yeah, I I believe one bird was like caught in a soccer net. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, mm. so they might have you know an injury to a wing mm-hmm. or an eye. I know we, one of the owls is blind, and right. you know one eye. Yeah. So these birds would not be able to survive in the wild. Mm -hmm. Um, But we've given them a a lease on life Mm -hmm. and um, they're living out their days in the aviary. Um, Great learning opportunity for everyone to experience these birds of prey up close. Yeah. They're really fascinating. You see an owl that close up and and with some light. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, Yeah. it's really great. And you look at it, it's like it's staring right at you. Mm -hmm. It's thinking about what I could I. Take that. Nah, that's probably a little too big. Yeah. Bring me a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we used to have um, our our turtle lady here, yes. um, Nancy Lockard, she would say that every time, you know, a snake, you know, stuck out its tongue, it's thinking, can I eat that? Can I eat that? Can I eat that? <laughs> <laughs> sort of like yes. having a teenage boy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm sure it's not far from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Beth. We really, we love our partnership with Preservation Parks. We, I mean, during the winter, we have the, the winter 100 yes. and now during the summer with the, the letterbox uh it's a great campaign and it's a, a pleasure working with you on this thank you we love working with our library well that's great we, it's uh you know this is one of the great things about delaware county is the way our organizations work together so, yeah yeah uh we have a few things coming up this week we want to mention before we get uh, done here today as i mentioned we're going to be in the powell memorial day parade we'll have the bookmobile um We'll have, we'll have, will we we'll have, have the book brigade. Okay, yes. yes. Will we have Percy? Can he come to this one? Percy's unable to make it to this one. Uh-huh. He's afraid that it might be a little too hot for him. Yeah, I could understand yeah. that. Okay. He doesn't walk very well long distances. Yeah. <laughs> Those big old feet of his just don't don't move that well. But anyway, we'll be there with the bookmobile and with the book, uh, book cart uh, drill team. We'll hope that we don't. Uh, injure the director this year, right? <laughs> <laughs> like we did at uh, the holiday party, okay, or the holiday parade. And so, summer reading club starts on Tuesday. Yeah. So we got some good programs coming up with the, the summer reading club. Yeah, we're really excited about um, the the like I said before the return of what feels like our regular summer reading club. One of the really exciting ones that we have coming up on Friday, June third at two o'clock at the Orange Branch Library is Tiger Woo's World Class Taekwondo. Um, this is great for ages six to twelve, elementary age kids uh, come and take a, 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 taekwondo, a taekwondo class. It's going to be um, about an hour um, with just constant movement the entire time. My daughter's in taekwondo. She loves it. You're probably going to learn some forms, some kicks, different things like that. Um, also on Thursday, if you are looking for something for your teen from 2 to 3 p.m., um, there is going to be... Oh, I stole your thunder, George. You're going to talk about this. Go ahead. But we're going to have an anime and Japanese history lesson. This is really exciting because um, it's going to be a professor from the University of Akron, Dr. Lisa Lackney, 
who is going to be talking about kind of the history of anime and answering questions that like kids might not even have known about anime. They might, you know, think that they know the word or the person, uh, Hijikata Toshizo. Um, but then this professor is actually going to say like that was a real person in history and here's oh. how they've contributed to uh, anime as we know it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Pretty and good I, with that I, pronunciation, right? I, I was impressed. Thank yeah, you. that's, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we do have uh, another program that uh, could be really interesting. This is, but this is a vir uh, an online program. This is uh, cool as a cucumber. Actually, it's in Con person, but it, you only will find the information online. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's on our events page. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't say registration required and all that sort of stuff. This is at Ostrander at the same time, actually, as that anime program. So if you don't feel like coming to Delaware, go to Ostrander and hear cool as a cucumber, calming skills 101. Yeah. Uh, this is for uh, tweens and. I guess older kids, mm -hmm. but it's to learn how to handle stress and being upset, and nervous, yeah. and stuff. How do you calm yourself? And healthy, these, this will give you some techniques for doing that. Yeah, yes. healthy ways to respond to uncomfortable emotions. We right. don't like feeling sad. How do we respond to that? How do we work with that feeling? Precisely. And of course, the big one, yes. the medieval fair, yes. Saturday, June fourth. If you you know go to Pal, get your media sale at nine, and then hop over to hop over to Ostrander at eleven, eleven a.m. to three p.m. Uh, Ostrander Branch Library. We've got a dragon's lair. We've got Sherwood Forest. We've got, um, let's see, a um, trebuchet to hurl things at Nottingham Castle. We've got the King's Court with King George. <laughs> and uh, will Queen Joyce be joining she us? She will indeed. <laughs> yes. So. We've got music performance. We've got a nickel harpa. If you don't know what it is, you'll have to come and find out. Uh, we've got jousting and we have sword play. We have jousting and sword play. The Knights of the Rose are amazing. We have a food truck that is on site. So if you get hungry for some for some food, then you can make your way out. We've got pirates. Legs. Yeah. yeah uh huh. <laughs> we've got pirates. We've got mermaids. It's going to be come in costume. What so much do, fun. What we don't have is any more time for this week's show. I know. So we have to sign Go up to here. Go to Blue Creek Park while you're out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you want to cool off after the fun at the at the fair, then go to the park. Sure. So I love it. Beth McCollum, thank you so much thank for being so here much. with today. Nicole, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. That was Gage Tell us behind the board and giving a plug to the friends himself, which we greatly appreciate. And we will see you in the stacks.